Hello friends, welcome back. Today, what we're going to do is continue with the APIs and microservices certification. We're going to do a basic node and express. So we're doing the introduction first. Uh, so introduction to basic node and express challenges. Node.js is a JavaScript runtime that allows developers to write backend, which means server-side programs in JavaScript. Node.js comes with a handful of built-in modules, small independent programs that help facilitate this purpose. Some of the core modules include HTTP, a mod module that acts as a server, a file system, a module that reads and modifies files, path, a module for working with directory and file paths, and assertion testing, a module that checks code against prescribed constraints. Express, while not included with Node.js, is another module often used with it. Express runs between the server created by the Node.js and the front-end pages of a framework. Express also handles an application's routing. Routing directs users to, to the correct page based on their interaction with the application. While there are alternatives to using Express, its simplicity makes it a good place to begin when learning the interaction between the back end powered by Node.js and the front end. Uh, working on these challenges will involve you writing your code on Glitch on our starter project. After completing each challenge, you can copy your public Glitch URL to the home page of your app into the challenge screen to test it. Optionally, you may choose to write your own project on another platform, but it must be publicly visible for testing. So publicly visible for testing is the kind of challenge here. Um, I think that I, don't, I would much rather write a web app in these tests that we can actually test that's live on the internet for real. So we're getting practice actually writing web applications. And so I want to do it that way. We're going to use GitHub, and we've got an app already deployed to Heroku, which means having it deployed to Heroku, meaning it's publicly available on a server. Now, if you want to see how I set that up, I recommend that you go to the last exercise because in the last exercise of the APIs and microservices, I set it up in here in the uh, pa managing packages with NPM. But now what we're going to do, I'm just going to continue to use that same app because it's already deployed to uh, Heroku. So we already have it live. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find, this is the GitHub and this here it is on Glitch. If you want to do this on Glitch, uh, feel free to do it that way. But for the purposes of this exercise, I'm going to use the um, GitHub repository. But I'm not actually going to clone this one. I'm going to use the existing Node app that we've already gone through the process of deploying it to Heroku, and we're just going to use that already live application, and we're just going to copy the code over from this boilerplate project. Um, so yeah, let's go to the first lesson. So basic Node and Express, meet the Node console. During the development process, it is important to be able to check what's going on in your code. Node is just a JavaScript environment, like client-side JavaScript. So that again, there's client-side and server-side. Client-side means the thing that pops up in your browser. Server-side means the computer that's somewhere else that's sending data to your client-side. So it's the, the, the computer that's sending information to your um, browser is this uh, backend or the server-side. Like client-side JavaScript, you can use the console to display useful debug information. On your local machine, you, mu you would see the console output in the terminal. On Glitch, you can open the logs in the lower part of your screen. You can toggle the log panel with buttons with the, bu with the log button. We recommend to keep the log panel open while working on these challenges. By reading the logs, you can be aware of the nature of their errors. So with us, we're deploying to Heroku. And so with Heroku, um, we, we go in, and our project's called Frozen Ocean. And so if you click the More tab, once you find it, first off, you have to click through uh, to get to your personal files, and then you'll find the one that you created. And if you don't know how to create it, then you've got to go through the previous lessons. Um, and then you come here, you click More, and then you say, say uh, View Logs. And that gets you to this page, which shows you the uh, log status of your project. So here we have it live. This is the project from the past one. If I refresh this page, you'll see that these changes will start to alter based on um, the project. And so we're, these are our logs here. And so we want to modify app.js for the hello uh, world. So my application is the same as it was. I saved it as the desktop. It's on boilerplate NPM. So what we're going to have to do here is sort of 
configure our existing application to pass the tests that are inherent in this one. <clears throat> and so to do that, we're going to uh, take a look at the uh, GitHub project, which is this guy. I'm pretty sure, no. Um, introduction. Okay, so the introduction, I'm going to the introduction and then it's saying duplicate this GitHub project. So this is the repository for this section. And so you can see there's two folders here. These two folders both have one file in them and then there's a bunch of folders here. And so we, it's not a whole lot of stuff that we need to reconfigure. Um, so this is our existing app. And what we wanna do is fix this. So we've got server, we've got package, package JSON, um, We've got the hyperdev assets is here. Um, this has a bunch of stuff in it, so I hope this doesn't make a big difference. But um, yeah, the first thing that we're gonna look at, is, and then the views, there's no, there's, our view folder has an index HTML file, but it's totally different than this one. So what we'll do is just take a lot of this and put it in here. So we can see that the link to the style sheet is the same, the title is the same. No, the title is different. Say, they say hello HTML, so we can say hello HTML and backend challenges. We have a link to a viewport with a device height. This one does not have that, so we want to add this in here. We've got the title in here now, and then we've got the link to the style sheet. So our head should, for all purposes, match the previous one. And then we have what's in the body element. So we're going to say this was the first one, we've got this in a container, and then from, so here, we're going to take the form and the H1, and then, and we're gonna add that into the body element of this guy. So we're copying that into here. And so if I save this, and then I come to my terminal, and I'm in the thing, if I go npm start, we should see, and then we visit localhost 3000, we see the HTML com, uh, content that they had in there. And so that's good to know because now we can um, continue uh, developing the application the way that they have it. So I'm gonna stop the server now, we don't need that. Uh, we've got the index HTML page. Um, let's see here. The public style sheet, it doesn't have a lot in here. So the style sheet we can copy over to our project as well, so public style. Now I'm looking at a body tag which has this guy, sans serif, align text, color, and background color. So these are mostly the same. We don't need to do that. H1, we don't have any H1 here, so we can do the H1 and then add this as a um, new CSS class. And then they also have some margin for the input text, and we don't have that existing either. So now we've added the new CSS from this um, boilerplate project. And now we can get into the main things. Uh, one thing that I'm noticing is that the boilerplate NPM project does not have a folder called um, myapp.js. So we're gonna wanna add that. So I'm right clicking and I press A to go quickly, but you could also just right click and say new file. So I right click and press A, and I'm just gonna write myapp.js. And so this is a blank file now, but we wanna copy the contents of this because we, this is where we're going to be doing most of the work for this project. And so I copy all the content for that and I paste it into here and save. Okay, and so the next step is we're gonna check out the back package.json and see if there's anything that we're really missing from here. So here they've got the name, uh, we've got a name, we have a version, dependencies, express, but they have all these other dependencies, so let's add these dependencies in. So body parser, cookie parser, FCC express background. We're gonna add all of those in here. And I like to keep the spacing. Okay, and so we save this. Main is equal to server.js. Scripts, we have start, node server, node. We have a different node version, but I don't think that that's going to be a problem. And then I have this repository tag in here that is actually unimportant, so I could get rid of this in this project. So if I save this project, if I save my package.json, that's great but now I need to update the application because our package lock doesn't have that. This is how you manage node dependencies. So I'm gonna come back over to the terminal and I'm gonna say npm install. And so npm, <coughs> unexpected string. So it looks like I've got a type error somewhere around here. 
okay, I'm missing a comma here in the dependencies. And that's really important. You have to have a perfect uh, package.json file. Okay, so now I'm gonna run npm install again. And uh, yeah, an expected string. I kind of saw that one really quickly, but you can s usually tell where, if it's an unexpected string or something like that, a syntax error, you just have to look through there. So our npm install has been successful. So now um, our package.json, because we ran npm install, this guy is now going to have things like body parser in it. Right, body parser is loaded into our package.json file. So if we go get status, we can see that we've changed a lot of the views. Okay, so now that we've got, we don't have to worry about adjusting package lock.json. Oh, that's not even in there. But the last thing that I think that's important is that we're gonna set, check the server.js file and compare that with our existing one, our server.js file. So here, um, yeah, we have, they're bringing in a bunch of things. They have BG, Bground, uh, my app, require my app. Okay, so my app is this guy, so we're requiring this in the server. I think that this is something we're definitely going to need. Um, and then, let's see, we already have the express, BG. We don't have this, so I'm gonna add this in here. BG, require FCC background express. Express, my app, app is equal to express. And then we have this if process, env, u, app use, allowed origins, this is all the same. And then they have the port down here, so. So yeah. Um, <laughs> API package, JSON, public static express. I'm not sure exactly what all these guys are, so we're just going to leave it for here for now. Um, this, this function is here, and I'm just gonna guess that all this code, uh, I don't remember specifically why this is here. Um, so we're just gonna see what happens for now. Port. And then instead, here we've got the port is equal to process.env. Well, we've got process env port or 3000. So we've got the same thing. It's just that they're naming it port here, and then they're saying listen on port. So we've got app.listen. Here's the key then. What we need to do is say background, set up background app, dear name, and then listen. We, we just set port automatically here. I mean, actually, we should just do this the same way. We can just call this one port, and then just say their port is equal to this guy. So now we've got port and our function, and then instead of console log, we want to go BG, bground log is listening. And then here we'll say on port, and then we're gonna add the port number plus dot dot dot. Cool, so now get status. We can see we've really updated the application um, and we've done npm install. And so now let's go npm start just to see if anything kicks off. Okay, it says that it's listening on port 3000, and if we come over here and we refresh the page, cool, it looks like it's working. Okay, so now I'm gonna stop our server, and I'm gonna go get status. Um, and now what we wanna do is, uh, yeah, okay, so now we're gonna go to this. For now, I think that our application actually has what we need in order to pass the tests on free code camp. So during the development process, it's important to do the logs. We recommend to keep a log panel open. We've got our log panel open because we are deployed to Heroku. So Heroku is our log panel. And if you have not already done so, please read the instructions. This is us setting it up, so I just went through that. And we want to app, modify myapp.js so it logs hello world to the console. So we're going to come over here. We're going to find myapp.js. And they actually have where they want you to do it here. And so you go uh, console.log, uh, hello world. And so if I save this and I run the server, npm start, we should be able to go to this application and refresh the page here. And it should console log, uh, hello world.
B ground. I wonder if I need to make a B ground dot log. So I've saved that and then I'm going to refresh and restart the server. Node server .js. Exit status one. So here B ground is not functioning. Okay, so perhaps we need to require the B ground in our my app folder. So if I save here and then our server failed to start, so I'm gonna run it here. And now we have it saying, hello world. So that was the key. And so, yeah, right now what we're doing is logging console log to this project. Now we're doing it locally, which means that we're not, our work isn't saved to GitHub, nor is it saved to Heroku. So I'm gonna cancel this, close the server, and I'm going to, you know, we can tell that we're in the boilerplate project. If I go LS, you can see the projects. If I go get status, this tells us the things that have changed. So I want to go get add, and then I'm putting a period to add everything. So now get status shows that they're all um, staged to be committed. And so we'll go get commit now, which means, um, you know, make a package of changes that we've uh, changed to the application. And so we're going to say, well, what are we doing here? We're setting this up for basic node and access. Setting up app for basic node and express tutorial. And now get status, we can see it's not there anymore. So now what we wanna do is get push. So here is free code camps. This is my, this is us running locally. And then if we come over here, we can see this is the project on Heroku. If I refresh the page here, nothing's changed because we haven't pushed our changes to Heroku. And then if I refresh the page here, you'll see I still don't have the, uh, oh, I actually have it on here because I was working on it earlier. But we, what we need to do is say git push. And git push is going to push the changes to our local project. So my app now, if we come here, we'll see that it has the background.log. And now, okay, so we've got it saved to kind of our, this is like our development environment. This is a great environment for working with other people. But now we also want to change, push these co this code to the Heroku servers. So we can say git push Heroku and then head master. Okay, so on the production app right now, it looks like this, but on our local app, it looks like this. And so what we're doing right now is we're saying to the production servers, hey, we've got this package of new code. It's got a single commit in it. We wanna add that to the application. And they're saying, okay, we've got it. We've succeeded in building it, and now we're launching it, and now it's released, and you can find it here. So Frozen Ocean 5816, this guy right here. Now, you'll see, so what I wanna do now is I'm gonna refresh this page, <clears throat> and our code is now here, which is great. And then if we look at our logs, we really wanna see, okay, I think I need to reopen this one. If I view the logs, um, we should see hello world in here. Okay, cool, we see hello world in our logs for our node server, which is great news. So what we should be able to do now is come back over here and put our URL for this project into the free code camp situation. Okay, so for whatever reason, <clears throat> this is not running right now. It is showing up in our um, logs. So we do have hello world showing up here still, and it's running, but we're not getting it to work. So what I wanna do is I'm just gonna comment out all the other stuff. Remember when we were looking at this, we have just this process variable, and so what I'm gonna do is just copy this even more. So instead of having all this extra routing in here, I'm gonna comment this stuff out, which means it's gonna, for purposes of the project, it's just not going to exist. And then we have this if process, which is exactly the same as the production one. And so then we're just gonna make this match exactly. App, and then we have express, my app, and then the BG background. And also you notice that we're not using strict here. So I'm gonna get rid of this, I'm gonna comment out the strict, and we're also not requiring the FS. So if I save this, and then we'll see what happens over here. So I'm gonna go get status. We see the server's been updated. So I'm, I'm going to say uh, NPM start. Let's see if it runs locally. It says hello world and it is running locally now. 
good news. Okay, so let's just see if some of this caused the gum up of the thing. So what I'm going to do is say git add, git commit, and I'm add the message. I'm commenting out server processes to match the exist the um, the start app more closely. And so now I'm going to say git push Heroku head uh, master. And so now I'm just pushing the changes that I've made here to the production app. So once again, the production app is going to run. And uh, yeah, a lot of the times when you're dealing with, when I deal with servers and server side languages and pushing things, you've just got to keep trying stuff and commenting code out to see what's causing the, the uh, break. Uh, if you look over here, you'll see that um, the Heroku server is actually mimicking what's happening here. And so again, we have our hello world, which means it's good. It says no JS is listening on a different port. We've set it up so that it has a dynamic port. And so we should have a functioning thing. I mean, in terms of seeing if we can push con comments console logs to the logs, we're definitely succeeding. Right now, all we're doing is trying to match free code camps testing environment. So let's run it again and see if it challenged. Okay, it still doesn't work. It says, listening on out, uh, API hello world, frozen ocean, request, connect. It says that it's not working. So free code camp. Hmm. So even though it is actually console logging hello world, we're still getting a failed test. Okay, so I took a little bit longer of a look at it and I figured it out. So what we want to do is console.log here, hello world. Now, the reason that this is so complex is because we're, we've got a lot of uh, stuff going on, but the console log is what we need to do. I'm actually going to leave the hello world at the B ground as well, just because um, I want this to pass and it's getting a little tedious. Essentially, what we're doing is we're showing that we can write server side code and show server side console logs um, over here. So if we go now, I'm going to say git add, and I'm going to say git commit, add console.log, hello world to uh, my app. Okay, so, and then we say git push Heroku head master. And so we're deploying this again. We're going to see our Heroku, our server side, it, which is the computer off in a building somewhere, which has the code that serves um, the data for our website. This is kicking it up. It's where we've, we've got a build started right now. Um, the build was succeeded, and then we're going to see the, the logs from that happening here. Yeah, so now it's restarting the server. It's deployed. This is version tw 22, um, and now it's got Hello World on here twice. But we're console logging, so that's what we're console logging here. And so now that we've updated that, and we can say, I can complete the challenge. And so that's how this is going to work. Let's move on to the next station. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. This is a required video for all the rest of them that are going to come in this section. Hope you guys enjoyed this. We'll see you in the next lesson.